your question is there, with respect to the wireless, there will be more things that we have to think about securing. So there will be, uh, it will be more of a, a superset, okay? okay? Or that network security outside of wireless will simply be a subset of all there is to know. And in fact, when you get the CCNP in, uh, uh, in wireless, one of the classes is, uh, the, and exams, is advanced uh, wireless security that you, that you have to uh, you have to pass that one as well. There's uh, five exams for uh, the CCNP wireless. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, in your opinion, uh, when we're thinking about buying a, a laptop with a Wi-Fi card built into it, and we want to, as consumers, go uh, surf at uh, Tully's. Um, what kind of things should we be looking for? They throw Super AG wireless cards. Okay. They, there are three chipsets uh, in all of the wireless world. Uh, Cineo, Prism, and, and Aethros, okay? Uh, the Cineo and Prism chipsets, and they all, now all wireless cards have got one of these three chipsets in them. Um, the, the, the Cineo and Prism chipsets are more what I would call like commodity grade, okay? The Aethros is more of a commercial uh, uh, enterprise grade. The Aethros uh, Super AG radios are the radios that, uh, that come in the Cisco equipment. I'm not selling them just because they come in Cisco equipment. They just plain and simply are better. Um, I set up the, uh, the, uh, the internet service provider up in Sandpoint, North Idaho. I'm not sure if you guys have ever got a chance to go up there to Lake Ponderé and uh, visit that area if you, if you haven't. I've been on up there sometime this summer. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, it's almost like Lake Tahoe was, what, 20 years ago? Uh, it's just beautiful, pristine lake. Um, I did a 17-mile shot across Lake Ponderé from the top of Schweitzer over to uh, Hope. Um, using the Aethro Super AG just on, on a 2.4 gigahertz wireless. That would be pretty much unheard of if we were in, uh, granted we did, we did have some big old 24 dB directional antennas and stuff like that. And it's, that is in no way anywhere near what the record is. The record is like 125 miles uh, with just 2.4 gigahertz equipment. They literally had to put the antennas up uh, above the curvature of the earth just because you know, we had to deal with, uh, with those problems. But, if you're going to be looking for specifically something in a wireless card, I would be looking for those Aethro Super AG radios. All of my laptops are Fujitsu because I know they come with Aethro radios. Thank you. Yeah, they're good. They're good radios. Um, I just want to say something real quick. Um, by the way, congratulations on CZI. Oh, thanks. Well, um, I'm not quite there yet. I haven't, haven't joined the club yet, but I have passed the written. Thank awesome. That. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, my name is Chris. I'm one of the instructors for the network program. And I just thought maybe you could share with everyone with the uh, IPT6 day coming out in June. Um, what are the different plans? What are the different uh, hurdles that Cisco is, is focusing on to prepare for that day? And also with the privilege of of wireless um, and access points and infrastructures, what does IPv6 mean to that? It's in all of the exams now. So basically, um, yeah, well, we don't really have much choice anymore. You know, for years uh, we could get away with uh, RSC 1918 private address space and uh, NAT in every incarnation, uh, NAT, PAT. DNAT, SNAT, whatever you want to call it, dynamic NAT, static NAT. Uh, well, that was nice. Those days are gone. Okay. Uh, you basically the bottom line is you got to learn the IPv6 uh, uh, addressing um, technology because if you go sit for uh, CCNP, I don't believe they they hit they hit it in the CCNA yet. But any of the professional exams, whether you're talking about voice or route switch, or service provider, or security, or wireless, it's in all of them. Okay, so they're, they're going to they're gonna drag you kicking and screaming, uh, whether you like it or not. So yeah, you're going to have to learn it. Yes, sir? Uh, with IPP, uh, IP6, um, do you even need to worry about routing anymore, since everybody can have their own IP address? Oh, well, of course we have to learn about routing. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, just because you have your own IP address, we still got to get from A to B, right? <coughs> we still got to tell it, you know, it, if, if you're in China with an IPv6 address and you're in, a, in America with an IPv6 address, 
uh, that traffic is going to have to go through a number of hops to get from uh, America to China, and it's it's routing that is going to uh, to get us there. Absolutely. Okay, I guess I I did clarify. Um, what about do we have to worry about subnetting? Oh well, subnetting is not going to go away. Okay. Well, now granted, while we have uh, there's enough IPv6 address space to uh, to not have to worry about. Uh, Making little ones out of big ones, okay? Breaking your slash 24 into multiple uh, slash 28s and so on. I used to, in fact, um, if you guys, here, here, quick, question, quick question, here's how to learn, uh, a, a way to learn how to earn beers uh, with your friends. Um, go into uh, the bar with your, they gotta be some of your geek buddies, uh, this, or else it's not gonna work. And bet them, uh, what is the, what is the, Third, what are the first two usable addresses in the third subnet? If I were to give you this, tell me the first two usable addresses in the third subnet. Okay, you gotta have the answer by now. It's not gonna work. Okay, so in the end of class, if you guys haven't figured out how to do that yet, I'll let you know. Basically, if you, can, you got, unless you've lost any fingers, okay, you got eight fingers. So you can subnet um, very, very quickly, in fact. By the way, about eight seconds is all you should have needed to get that answer. Um, with respect to the question, slash, uh, uh, I should say, um, uh, IPv4 is not going to go away overnight. Okay? It's kind of like frame relay. You know, we're all, we're all learning MPLS now. Um, but frame relay hasn't gone away yet. Okay, so, and in fact, there's still a tremendous amount of uh, uh, information that's required to, uh, to about frame relay to pass the CCNA exam. So it's not like you can learn IPv6 and forget about IPv4 subnet. Okay, it's it's, it's going to be in a lot of places for quite a while uh, before we make the conversion. Okay, so granted, while it's going to be mandated, um, everyone's not going to you know, you're not going to wake up one morning and say, oh, I've got to redo everything in IPv6. Okay, so it's going to be around for a while. So I'd say, yeah, you know, make sure you don't have subnet. Yes, sir. Well, from what I'm seeing, with subnetting logically, maybe you won't need to do that, but subnetting physically, like with neighbor discovery protocol and things like that, you're still dealing with something. You're, you're still reasons. dealing with subnets, yeah. Okay. I mean, you're, you're still going to have, uh, while you don't necessarily have to have RSC 1918, private address space, you're still going to have networks that are very hierarchical in nature. For example, OSPF v3, which is OSPF using uh, IPv6, is still going to have to be very hierarchical in nature. We're still going to have to have a uh, route summarization. Um, we're still going to be breaking big ones into little ones, so it's, it's not going to go away. Yeah. It, but it's not going to quite be the same thing that IPv4 or something. Does that make sense? Thank you. No, essentially, the bottom line is uh, we, we take one big chunk of address space, and as we as we divvy it up among the organization, uh, those we, we generally don't want to have a, what we call a flat network. Okay, we're, we're going to take if we're talking IPv4 address space, uh, we'll take a slash 24. Okay, and we'll break it into what two slash. You guys don't know yourself any? We'll break that up into two slash 25s. Okay, how many addresses in slash 24? 256. 256. 250, 250, 0 to 255. Okay. Um, slash 25 just breaks it up into two chunks of 128 addresses each. Okay. And so while, you know, while we might have uh, a single slash 24, we might have like one building here and one building here, and uh, a router here, and a router here, and this guy's responsible for uh, his 128 addresses, and this guy's responsible for his 128 addresses, and, we would, and summarize them accordingly. Um, so just like it was mentioned, while we're not gonna have IPv4 subnetting, uh, the, the, the concept of breaking a big one into little ones is not gonna go away. 
Last three minutes. Yes, sir. Can you tell a uh, little more about Cisco Voice and what certifications needed and uh, what kind of job in this field? And, uh, you know, just so, uh, there, there are, I could talk for 30 minutes just on voice alone. Because once you get into voice, you start dealing with call manager and operating the server that is basically, it's equivalent to like the PBX of, uh, of yesterday. Okay? Then within, uh, within voice, so, so we have like call manager. Oh, and I would definitely focus on uh, virtualization. And no matter which area you go here, you can't go wrong understanding virtualization. Okay? In Cisco world, that's the UCS technology, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go virtualization in Cisco. All of my stuff that I virtualize, I do with uh, VMware, running uh, ESX uh, 4.1. Um, and a lot of these appliances, for example, the call manager, this is where I just, what made me think of this, call manager runs in, in, in an ESX 4.1 uh, VM. Okay? So uh, you, can act, and you can download the software from Cisco. While it might be a very, very expensive, uh, you know, 4,000, 5,000, 20,000, depending on what some of these pieces of uh, software are, you can go get 30 day email copies and get an email license and get your ESX 4.1, put it on your 64 bit machine or 32 bit machine and get you the version and run a copy of Call Manager. Start learning it that way. Okay, so you can get this. And you didn't learn it here, but uh, when that uh, email license expires, just build another one. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like some software that, you know, once you install it in 30 days, runs out, that you can't run it on the machine anymore. Okay. And they won't, a lot of times they will not advertise that this stuff is running in a VM. But I thought it was very uh, funny one day, not funny, haha, -ha, but. Uh, when I started loading uh, my Cisco Secure ACS uh, server, which is the um, the access control policy server, it basically is what uh, um, it's going to provide the access control to people logging into the network, whether they're logging in wired or wireless, uh, or coming in by a VPN. It doesn't make any difference. And as it was booting up, it looked like I was booting one of my Red Hat Linux machines. I thought, what the heck? This thing is running freaking Red Hat Linux. And uh, it became apparent to me that um, it was running on Linux. And so uh, a lot of this stuff, and they don't advertise it. They don't say, hey, you know, if you know how to run Linux boxes, you can go ahead and run this on your No, they don't say that. But rest assured, the majority of the stuff that they're running now, these appliances, CSACS, Call Manager, all these things run in VMs. So Call Manager, this is the server that controls the phones. You can, you, you can go, um, and, and this would probably be like the, the CIPT, if, you, if you're looking at the exam series. Uh, CIPT 1 and 2. Um, the guys, uh, oops, 1 and 2. The guys that are running the call managers today are probably, let's see, Walsh. Walsh is probably making 110, 120, 130 grand for knowing how to run that server. Um, uh, you could do the C, what is it, CI, uh, let me think, that the contact manager. I'm trying to think of, there's uh, Unity, which is the voice messaging system. Um, and I, I, I have to apologize, I just don't know the acronyms for some of these. I just haven't gone off in that direction. I've at least done a deep dive in that direction. But uh, Unity is the, uh, is the voice messaging, what they call uh, um, uh, the uh, voice Forget the name of it. It's a uh, VRs. The automated voice response. Okay? That, that's not that's that's not the acronym though. But it's you know, when you when you call somebody and uh, it says you know so and so is not here, uh, leave a message. Okay, it's, it's that. Uh, Unity is the is the Cisco uh, uh, product. Um, the other one is uh, Cisco Contact Center. Uh, and there's uh, there's probably about two or three more other directions that you could go 
Uh, I'm sure that there's at least one more. I, again, I just I haven't done the deep, I haven't done the deep dive. We have a whole voice group over at PSC, and they don't let me touch their voice stuff. <laughs> they're uh, they're all union guys, and there's a there's a union thing that goes on up there. Um, so there are like three or four different directions that you could go and specialize in any one of those. So you're talking about like a, a Cisco will have their server and uh, I guess uh, uh, you know. IP phones all over the building, or you know, throughout a few buildings in the organization, you talking this stuff, or um, what about the wireless carriers? Do they use some Cisco equipment as well in their networks? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Either Cisco or Juniper. Uh, Cisco and Juniper are the two big carrier uh, grade vendors, and within the uh, within the wireless side of the house, um, there's also the, the Cisco wireless phones. So it, it basically keeps people from having to worry about carrying their BlackBerry. Uh, it's essentially, the way all the pieces snap together here is that the call manager is what uh, sits on the back end and uh, is, where all, is where all the phones register. And then these other applications that I was, that I was mentioning, Uni uh, Unity and the contact center, these are applications that run on call manager. There's separate applications that just provide additional value. So, uh, and they might not call it Unity, they might call it Unified something. Uh, in fact, this is now a CUCM, Cisco Unified uh, Call Manager, and they also have CUCME. We can actually run a, a call manager on a router. So if you want to experiment with uh, doing like a voice, Cisco voice, you don't actually need to go out and buy a call manager or, or deploy a, uh, uh, one in a VM. You can run CUCME on a router and, and get your IP phones to register with uh, CUCME. And so all of the phones are registering with either call manager or with uh, CUCME. And these other pieces are uh, just additional appliances uh, or uh, applications that run in VMs that uh, add value to the, the whole system. Does that make sense? Um, I know that VoIP is new to Packet Tracer, but if students have Packet Tracer, I can't remember, is Call Manager actually in one of those devices? Uh, no. No, it's the Call Manager right. application is gigantic. There might be some uh, form of emulation yeah, for yeah. Call Manager, but it, it's you're certainly not getting a, uh, like a, a version of Call Manager. Just and just like you're not really getting uh, frame, re you're not really getting a frame switch in there either when you develop your frame relay uh, um, uh, labs. It, it, it's an it's an emulation only. But I mean, it, it might be enough for you to uh, at least be able to experiment. CUCME uh, Express is probably the best way to go if you want a real uh, live version of call manager running on a piece of equipment that you can have IP phones um, registering. Uh, and uh, the piece is here, so we don't want to keep that waiting. Um, but John will be here for a little bit still to yeah. answer some questions and do some networking. So um, the other kind of networking. <laughs> so uh, he charges too much for that. Uh, so please come up and uh, chat with him. Um, Oh, no, they don't give me business cards. Okay. They generally don't even let me on my office most of the time. <laughs> they keep me, I'm, a, I'm actually a, 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 what they call an, an R&D analyst, where for the most part they, they keep me sequestered in this little tiny space and don't let me out very often. We are honored to have you here today. So, uh, so we'll, bring the, we'll bring the pizza in over the table here. How many are there? Um, Four. Maybe let's have them out here. Then. <laughs> hey, good news. <laughs>